Welcome, forward-thinking viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. This program is the conclusion of a three-part series featuring an interview with a popular quantum physicist, author and lecturer from the United States, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf. Dr. Wolf earned a PhD in theoretical physics from the University of California, Los Angeles, USA, in 1963. He has lectured across the world, conducted extensive research in his field, written many award-winning books such as Taking the Quantum Leap in the Spiritual Universe, and served as the resident physicist on the Discovery Channel program, The No Zone. Dr. Wolf has appeared in popular films such as What the Bleep Do We Know and The Secret. He is known for explaining the complex laws of quantum physics in an engaging way so that non-scientists can better understand them and see how they relate to spiritual principles. His fascinating work has sparked the interest of many to deeply inquire into the nature of existence and the mind. Today, Dr. Wolf delves into the past and speaks about some of the most famous physicists in history. Returning to the present, he will discuss current theories regarding the nature of parallel universes. Finally, he will close with a thoughtful message about spirituality. Let us now rejoin our intriguing interview with Dr. Fred Allen Wolf. You speak a lot about Plato. What was his role in quantum physics? Well, that's a good question, actually. Uh, not only do I uh, have a certain respect for Platonic thinking and for Plato, but also Roger Penrose, a noted physicist, who's also written about Platonic ideals as well. The basic notion is the debate between Plato and Aristotle. Aristotle was essentially a student of Plato, as I understand it, uh, 2,500 years or so ago. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the idea there was that Plato believed there was an ideal world, a non-material ideal world, and uh, from this ideal world, the practical world got built. For example, there's an ideal table in mm -hmm. Plato's world, mm -hmm. and the table that any carpenter makes is going to be inferior to the ideal. It's always gonna have some pragmatic difficulty. One of the legs might be a little shorter than the other, uh, or a little wider than the other, the table may not be perfectly flat, et cetera. In other words, it, 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 it'll function as a table for all practical purposes, unless we really want to measure things in a very refined way, okay. but uh, it's still not the ideal table. And as far as Plato's concerned, the ideal world is where uh, real things, quote unquote, come from. We, so therefore, the notions of the quantum physics seems to be more platonic in the sense of, because the things we work with mm -hmm. in the quantum physical world, theoretically anyway, are ideals rather okay. than actualities. One of the most celebrated uh, scientists was Albert Einstein. Yeah. Was he a detractor of quantum physics? Not at all, he was one of the founders of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he became what, is appeared, what appeared to be a detractor when, um, he debated with uh, Niels Bohr, uh, mm -hmm. the famous Bohr-Einstein debates that took place in the 20s, uh, and even continued after the initial debates, which were in the 20s, into even the day that Bohr died. He was still debating Einstein, even though Einstein had died eight or nine years before him. Uh, so uh, uh, the whole notion was, uh, is quantum physical reality complete? Is it a complete explanation of, mm -hmm. of reality? Uh, basically, Einstein said, said no. Um, he didn't think, quote unquote, God played dice with the universe, uh, whereas Bohr said, stop telling God what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was how the debate went. And it, it went into all kinds of different possible things. But so far, uh, Einstein has never won anything on that debate. Okay, all right. Well, why do you think that is? Because Einstein's picture was basically a, one of what is called classical physics. And Einstein was basically disturbed by this thing I just talked about earlier about the notion of entanglement. Entanglement uh, was not, you know, according to Einstein's kosher way of looking at things mm -hmm. because it indicated some kind of action at a distance uh, faster than light. And Einstein came up with a theory of relativity which says that basically no information can travel faster than light. Yeah, okay. 
So do you have any insights on the theory of many universes? Well, uh, I've had a few of them. Um, I've written, I wrote a book called Parallel Universes. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I should tell your audiences, I have many books out there, almost 17 of them right now. Mm. And my latest book is called Time Loops and Spaced Twists, <laughs> How God Created the Universe. This should be appearing in, in the early spring of 2011. But I wrote a book called Parallel Universes back in the, in the 1980s. I tried to explain how the concept originated, how it originated, where it came from. It actually comes from quantum physics. And it actually comes from general relativity. There are two fields in which it developed without any connection between the two. Mm -hmm. Nobody thought there was anything between the two, yet they both fields developed a notion of something called many universes or parallel universes. Let me talk about it from a quantum physics point of view first. Mm -hmm. When you observe something, it, it instantly goes into a particular state at the moment of observation. When you're not observing something, uh, then it's possible for the thing, the system, or whatever it is that you're looking at to be in many different states at the same time. Atoms exist in the same way with different states of energy and uh, they are linear combinations of all the possible states that they could be in and so forth. So we have what we call many states. It then became of interest to ask what would happen if an, how an observer observes these different states. Mm -hmm. In other words, the observer becomes split into all the different possibilities Mm -hmm. as well as the different possibilities that are there. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, then we have multiple universes and multiple observers. So that one observer is not what happens. What everybody does when they observe is they split themselves into multiple observers, each one observing a different state in a different universe. Mm -hmm. Since the two don't ever talk to each other because observers are so complicated, you don't know the splits occurred, and as far as you're concerned, you're still in the same universe. Sounds silly, sounds a bit crazy, mm -hmm. but that's how people were trying to model the effect of mind, by splitting the observer as if the observer were an object like the thing being observed. Mm -hmm. That's where the idea originated, originated from. And at first people didn't believe it at all, then they began to believe it even more so, and now they have the notion that, well, yes, it's true, but, and they add a little bit of but, they call it the theory of decoherence, which means that when you split the relationship of one observer and his universe to himself in another universe is decoherent. You can't bring them back together again ever. That's the kind of idea there. It's an added thought. Okay. So uh, that's where many universes come into, into being there. Uh, the idea is caught on and it's led people into all kinds of speculation about am I, can I go to a parallel universe and people write me, well, how can I get to a parallel universe and uh, that sort of thing. And I try to mm. explain them that it doesn't quite work that way, but nevertheless, I still get those kind well, of that's questions. That's a question I would have. Sure. I would like to, to test, see if this universe is better for me or some other universe. Yes, I totally agree. If we can figure out a way to make a model of you, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can make a test. Okay. In other words, if we can model what it is about you that makes observations, then of course such a test like that could be, car could, could be carried out. Mm -hmm. And indeed could take a photograph of you in a parallel universe. Mm. Okay. But there has to be a way to model you. Mm. And so far we don't know how to model how your consciousness works, so we don't know how to do that. In concluding our interview with Dr. Wolf, we asked him to give a message to those who may only have faith in science and do not believe that there is a spiritual side to our existence. Think about these questions. If in asking yourself, where was I before I was born? Where will I be after I die? Who am I? If in asking those questions, something gets ignited inside of you, some flame of inquiry, some igniting of consideration mm -hmm. that there's something going on here that is really mysterious. It, 
if you are excited by such things as what I've just mentioned, these kinds of questions, then you're becoming spiritually awakened. And now the question is, how much awakening are you willing to sustain in your life? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to walk in a completely awakened state all of the time? Do you think that's possible? If you do, or if you wish to, then you are now taking steps on the spiritual path. The spiritual path is actually the path you've always been on. Mm -hmm. You may not remember it, but it was the path you chose mm -hmm. before you were born and will be the path you will be on after you pass from this physical existence. Mm -hmm. The spiritual path is when you're willing to look at things which don't fit the, the preconceived notion of what is. And you're beginning to really realize that there's something going on here which is igniting, burning mm -hmm. inside of you, opening up like a flower growing, like a seed that's been planted. And the spiritual master is going to be there constantly nudging you mm -hmm. to awaken to that, constantly trying to get you to water that seed. Professor Fred Allen Wolf, we thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Once again, our sincere appreciation, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, for sharing your sage thinking on the connections between the spiritual world and the realm of quantum physics. Through the work of scientists like you, may we forge a greater understanding of the universe so that humanity quickly progresses toward a higher level of enlightenment. For more details on Dr. Wolf, please visit www.fredallenwolf.com. Books, CDs, and DVDs by Dr. Wolf are available at the same website. Splendid viewers, thank you for your company on this week's edition of Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May your life be blessed with peace, happiness, and God's loving grace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash SS.